Governor, we talked a few moments ago about uh, the bureaucracy in the United States, and Congress and the Senate seemingly more and more are, are passing bills, or the, the bills keep coming up, uh, to really regulate beyond not just bureaucracy, but by law, uh, such issues as the abortion issue, uh, as I mentioned, the child raising issue now, sexual standards for the American people, several states now licensing of religious organizations, uh, basically getting down to uh, telling us uh, that we can or cannot do something that is basically against the Bible. This kind of upsets us a little bit as as Christians and evangelical Christians. Uh, it upsets us because we feel a nation that turns its standard against the standard of the Word of God is a doomed nation. And that is why, uh, I'll be blunt with you, the murder in the last few years of seven million unborn babies is a hard subject for us to deal with these days. It's uh, the, the sexual standards uh, and other standards. Uh, we feel that we have a country that's free and open, and, and man should have that privilege. But when it, by law, says you cannot pray, or uh, you have to have uh, the, the liberty to do something that's contrary to our belief, this concerns us. Uh, how about you? <laughs> well, it concerns me very much. And again, it's another example of forgetting the meaning of the Constitution. What we're seeing today, I think, is we're interpreting the Constitution now, not that there shall be a separation of state and, and religion. We're seeing the interpretation that there will be uh, a separation and an elimination of religion. Yes. Uh, I think that atheism, in a way, uh, is a kind of a belief, or, and, and yet the law is now favoring that when one woman uh, an atheist can succeed in getting prayer out of every school in the United States because it's contrary uh, to atheism. Uh, there isn't anything in the Constitution. It, it makes it very clear this is a nation under God, and we must never forget that. And, um, and I am, am I interpreting that you would be in favor of having prayer back in the public schools? Yes, you are interpreting correctly. I would. It never should have been out of there. But uh, a government is intervening uh, there. The, uh, let's take sex education. They made a very rational case for the fact of unhappiness and high divorce rates and so forth due to ignorance with regard to this field and the children were not getting the proper education in it at home so therefore the schools were going to take it over. But then came the issue of well how do you do this without stepping on someone's toes regarding their religious beliefs. So the result was sex will be taught in the schools with no moral connotation whatsoever as a purely physiological act, just physical, like eating a ham sandwich when you're hungry. Well, in a sense, when you do that, you are teaching immorality. You cannot conceive of discussing sex without discussing the moral aspects of it. And yet we've done this. In one school district in California, in the very first few years after sex education classes started, the venereal disease rate among teenagers in that district went up 4,000 percent. Now, don't tell me that's a coincidence, but we can't, we must not simply discard all the values upon which civilization is based uh, just because uh, we're, going to, we're going to have some interpretation that this, in a way, is invading someone else's rights. Uh, the Constitution says that government shall make no establishment of religion. But it does not say that government's going to interfere with your right to be religious. And therefore, this thing that you're not supposed to uh, pray in a public building. Uh, I've spoken in a school and had the principal on the way into the speech say, now, of course, you know that you must not uh, mention anything about God or Jesus or anything of that kind. As a matter of fact, I once was the speaker at a convention of military chaplains and had one of those chaplains, the entire audience made up of clergymen, thank me afterward because he said, in three days of these meetings, you have been the first person 
that mentioned the name of Jesus in the entire convention. Now, that's being awfully sensitive to supposedly the governmental uh, field. And uh, I just think we've gone overboard. I, I think it's ridiculous, and I think common sense needs to be returned. Uh, you know, the person who got prayer out of schools even objected to one of the astronauts 300,000 miles out there in space saying a prayer. Uh, I say a prayer before the airplane leaves the ground. <laughs> Governor, in your own words, who is Jesus Christ? Exactly who he said he was. You either believe that. He never, he didn't give you any, any room to disbelieve. He said he was the Son of God. And what he said either is true or he was the biggest charlatan and liar that ever lived. And I don't think that a charlatan and a liar could affect the world for 2,000 years the way this one man did in those three years of his teaching. You have to believe one or the other about him. And I believe he was who he said he was.